Do you want to pay more in taxes? How about a hundred billion plus more in taxes? Does that sound good with all the inflation going on right now? Uh, does that feel uh, all warm and fuzzy? Do you want a, a tax hug? No one understands how game changing this is going to be for the future of the world. Two kids, two runaways lost in the backbeat of a heartbreak. What does it matter anyway? If you can't find the science, follow the money. That's where you'll find the science. As Jordan Peterson said, it's not that they care about the environment. They hate humanity. And uh, I'd have to agree with Jordan Peterson's uh, statement. Let's just look at the facts and you can decide for yourself. You know, I'm not, I'm not really a big fan of paying more money to the government, more taxes, when it might be unnecessary. You know, I'd like to talk about real estate, finance, entrepreneurship, and some uh, health and fitness, but I think this is important to talk about right now. When someone pitches me a deal or I'm racking my brain on a proposal, sometimes I follow the money trail to find the truth, my friends. So let's just look at this objectively. You know, I'm all in for green technology. However, our infrastructure is not there yet to power a modern, you know, economy right now. It's not there. Wind and solar can't power a modern economy. That is a fact. You know, I did a talk a while back on the $30 trillion debt crisis. I'll put it uh, at the end of, of the video, um, you know, before we get into the Green New Deal. Uh, the debt crisis kind of goes hand in hand with global warming. And wait, I mean, um, I mean, climate change. It, it, wait, is it global warming or is it climate change? I'm confused. You know, you know, the Green New Deal will mean a hundred plus billion dollars to taxpaying citizens. That gives me some heartburn. I don't want to pay more in taxes if I don't have to. Do you? So the debt is a major issue that is not way down the road like everyone thinks. Just, you know, just, you know, kick the can down the road. Right. I don't think so. The government had an opportunity and this is on record a year ago to lock in our debt at one point eight percent long term, on record. So instead, we basically stayed on what is equivalent to adjustable rate mortgage. Maybe we'll go down to 1.4%. They thought we'll gamble, roll the dice. Guess what? It went to up to over 3.8%. So I did a talk on this as well. For each percentage point that these rates go up, it cost us $30 trillion over 30 years, ladies and gentlemen. So about a trillion dollars a year. So Biden's green new policies have now effectively blocked all new U.S. oil production and imports since he took office. He signed executive orders and shut down our oil industry from the Keystone Pipeline to issuing fewer new um, oil permits, uh, exploratory permits on federal lands. Anwar, he shut it all down. He has shut the U.S. oil industry down without, I stress, without a replacement. You don't shut it down unless you have a replacement. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, wind and solar cannot power a modern economy and everyone knows it. I'm all for green, but we are 40 to 50 years out. Guess what solar panels are made with? Fossil fuels. Guess what wind turbines run on? They run on oil to lubricate the internals. Do you see what a joke this is? I have seen the studies. I've talked to some scientists. I listened to others. I'm just reporting the facts. Don't get mad at me. Joe Biden has done more than any president has done since World War II in the wrong direction for our country. Biden could open oil here immediately. Instead, he went to Saudi Arabia, ladies and gentlemen, and begged, got on his knees for oil. And guess what? They turned him down. This is the same guy that tough talk tough about Khashoggi who was murdered and put into a box and now we're trying to get business with these guys. They would not take his phone calls so he had to go across the pond in a plane and they still said no and said get back on your plane and get the hell out of here. This isn't an embarrassment. This, this has been done by design. We can't be this stupid. So now we buy our oil from our enemies and their oil and they're saying no to us and by the way their oil is dirty 
China, India, Russia, Brazil, the Middle East, they're not going to wind and solar because they can't. It doesn't power a modern economy. Have you all noticed that food has become much more expensive? That shelter has become much more expensive. Energy is more expensive. Many consumer goods are simply unavailable right now. Can you not see that this is going to get worse if um, this Deloitte style more, you know, if these moralists, these Deloitte style moralists have their ways, how much short term pain can you, you take? Are you going to be required to sustain right now? Maybe decades worth all your life and the life of your children? It's very likely. It's very scary. And for your own benefit, remember that all this uh, painful privation uh, is, not, is not going to save the planet. It's going to make it far worse. The fastest and most certain pathway forward to the future we all want and need a peaceful, prosperous, beautiful world is through economic elevation of the absolute poor instead of writing them off. Richer people care about the environment. They don't have things to worry about like paying mortgages or finding their next meal. You know, it's after all is outside the primary and functional concern of those desperate for their next meal. Make the poor rich and the planet will improve or at least get out of their way. Get out of their way while they try to make themselves rich. Clouch, you made money off capitalism and now you got a G5. Now you want to stifle people from doing what you did. Make the poor poorer. And this is the concrete plan, by the way, remember, and things will get much worse, perhaps worse beyond imagining. You, you, have you observed the chaos in Sri Lanka and all across the protests going on across the world, if you know where to look, if you need proof? There are clearly more important priorities than costly and ineffective energy climate change reductions right now. You know, one guy, Bjorn Loberg's work, among others, such as Barry Matubi and Matt Ridley, has demonstrated that other pressing problems could and should be uh, political and economic priority right now. Uh, from you know the perspective of good done dollar spent, look at the Dutch farmers right now, the best farmers in the world, the most productive, and the fishermen that are rising up. Why are they doing that? What is happening? The Canadian truckers are pushing back. What's going on? You know, such protests are spreading and increasingly intensifying all over the world. You know, there's nothing wrong with peaceful protesting, but why is it happening? Things are being pushed too far and not producing the, raw, the results they are hypothetically intending. This agenda justified by emergency, the world is ending. It's been an emergency, ladies and gentlemen, for 50 plus years when we talk about climate change. This agenda will make everyone poor from looking at the data particularly those who are already poor. For example, I pulled some data here. Senator, senator Paul Sangas, former senator of Massachusetts, said in 1980, 1980, 30 years before Al Gore and 40 years before today, according to him, we would all be dead by now. He said, global warming means goodbye Miami. Goodbye, Corpus Christi. Goodbye, Sacramento. Goodbye, Boston. Goodbye, New Orleans. Goodbye, Charleston. Goodbye, Savannah. Uh, on the positive side, he says, and I quote, we can enjoy boating in the Capitol and fishing on the South Lawn at the White House. Can you believe that? He said, climate change, global warming, the ice caps are going to melt. Sea levels are going to rise. Everything is going to be underwater, ladies and gentlemen, was said 50 years ago, 50 years before, you know, so 50 years they've been pushing this racket. The sun god exists. What a joke. Please keep putting money in our pockets, folks. Keep believing what we're saying. Folks, is Miami underwater? Are people fishing on the South Lawn right now 50 years later? Come on, man. Come on. When in doubt, simply scare the socks off everyone. If they are sufficiently sheeple, they will quietly fall in line. It's been said. And, you know, not knocking football, but everyone's watching football, not reading. This is a single-minded strategy for climate change alarmists. Recently, this is both sides, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not just calling out Democrats. Democrats on Capitol Hill are, are pressuring the Biden administration to declare a climate emergency. 
voicing their doomsday predictions like 50 years ago. They insist that without immediate action to curb and ultimately end our dependence on fossil fuels, the planet and, uh, and by implication, every living creature that inhabits it will die, will die, and there's more. If uh, I quote, I quote, um, <laughs> if, we, if we don't really begin to lower emissions, this planet has no chance that's Rep. Alan Lowenthal, he's a Democrat, California, said, we have a few years left only. We only have a few le years left and the planet is dying. We're all going to die. Many of us recall Al Gore in 2006 warning, uh, you know, that he conveyed in his book and documentary, An Inconvenient Truth. Gore predicted that the uh, North Pole ice would be gone by 2013. What happened? It's still there. John Kerry famously stated in an interview, this is huge, I'll put it in the description, he said 90% of all, John Kerry stated 90% of all the planet emissions, global emissions, come from outside the U.S. borders. We could go to zero, he said, tomorrow, and the problem would still not be solved. I will include his video in the description. So, Mr. Kerry, we go to zero and nothing will change except our country will be destroyed and John Kerry will continue to fly around on a G5. So President Biden's climate czar, John Kerry, admitted that the U.S. reducing its emissions to zero, just reporting the facts, folks, zero wouldn't make much of a difference in the global climate change fight, uh, except destroy your life. Uh, before pushing, you know, as he stated that, he transitioned before pushing domestic manufacturing electric cars, and solar panels in favor of energy production. Mr. John Kerry, John Francois Kerry, guess who's going to make our solar panels? China. Coal plants have been closing over the last 20 years in the U.S., and China opens a new one every week. So what President Biden wants to do is make sure that uh, those folks have better choices. We're getting choices, uh, that they have alternatives, and that they can be uh, the people who go to work uh, to make you know, solar panels. We're going to make solar panels in the United States. No, wait, Joe, China will be making all the solar panels. We all know that. You know, I'm, not, I'm calling out both sides. Remember Obama's, you know, they purchased an oceanfront mansion in Martha's Vineyard for $14.8 million recently. The Obamas appear to be either impervious to the effects of climate change on the ocean there or guilty of exaggerating its dangers when he was president of the United States. You know, it's been observed that Obama obviously is not as worried about climate change and sea level rise as he pretended to be when he was in office, folks. Those are just the facts. You know, remember, he, he did spend eight years lecturing the American people about uh, the importance of, um, you know, minimizing their carbon footprints and get rid of your air conditioner and the, the looming crisis of the eroding shorelines. Uh, his house, his new house, beautiful mansion, by the way, the Obamas, congratulations on it. It's less than 50 feet from the water. Okay, he's not too worried about it, is he? And I have clients that are buying properties all around the world, indirectly, directly that we talk to. Remember Solyndra? Solyndra, remember the Solyndra scandal, which, you know, ensnarled the Obama administration, that the solar panel company went bankrupt shortly after receiving $528 million of U.S. PECs taxpayer dial loan guarantees under the Obama uh, technology, clean technology program. You know, so the administration was accused of hurrying an Office of Management and Budget Review of the enormous loan to advance its green economic agenda. So what happened, folks? They got the money allocated. They stole the monies, U.S. taxpayer monies. And this is not just a Democrat thing. There is a list of green companies that received monies and went bankrupt. Folks, you know why? Because it's a racket. They get the money. And they don't even open the company because green cannot power a modern economy. The technology is not there. They get taxpayer monies and never open these green companies. Uh, recently, in an MSNBC interview, Biden's so-called climate czar John Kerry refused to criticize China. He refused to criticize China for being the globe's biggest polluter and instead defended the communist state. Unbelievable. Uh, and his reasoning for that is he says that uh, they have more electric vehicles than the United States. <laughs> Kerry was asked about China's repeated refus refusal to act in accordance with other nations in reducing um, their carbon emissions. Um, and, uh, you know, 
what can uh, what can be done about China and their seemingly uh, reluctance to participate in affairs of climate control with other nations? They don't want to participate. They don't want to play ball. Uh, he was asked that question, and you know, Kerry claimed that China, interestingly enough, has a plan while admitting that they could be doing more. Ooh, he just you know he he just you know rolled that line very carefully. What a great politician. Uh, could be doing more. Uh, that's an understatement, sir. China is the biggest emitter of fossil fuel carbon dioxide emissions on the globe. Uh, uh, you know, and that's according, uh, basically it's accounting for close to a third of all the emissions. China emits more greenhouse gas than the entire developed world combined. And that's research by the Rodane group. Uh, they concluded. So if you believe that, uh, it, you know, th the planet is dying, carbon emissions are killing the planet, uh, Kerry claims he does, right? And then China should be repeatedly criticized as the primary culprit, but he refuses to criticize them. Instead, Kerry, uh, you know, claiming, giving them a, a prop up that they have more electric vehicles, uh, that they'll be putting more electric vehicles on the road over the next year, uh, and, you know, and then all the world put together. So Kerry, along with other Biden officials, has repeatedly uh, tooted electric cars, which cost folks, other people have talked about this, an average of close to $70,000, and in many cases lead to more carbon emissions than regular cars. If you look at the data, it's very interesting. And 50% of Americans only have $500 in their account. How are they going to fight a seventy, a four to seventy thousand dollar car? RNC research, uh, June 14, 2022. You know, remember Obama had that great birthday party. Former senator and U.S. special presidential. You know, John Kerry was spotted along with uh, you know TV host presenter Stephen Colbert. Both men have homes on the island. Kerry took a private jet to the island uh, of Martha's Vineyard. You want to know how much carbon that uh, jet emits? Carrie's family private jet has emitted over 300 metric tons of carbon since Biden, uh, you know, took office. And that's federal data shows. You know, Jamie Dimon, I'm just calling out the facts, folks. Jamie Dimon, he's the CEO of Chase, says stopping oil and gas production Stopping oil and gas production in the United States would be a road to hell for us. You know, I think I would agree with Jamie Dimon. He had a moment of clarity. Uh, and let's look at the other side of this. The other side, for example, MSNBC host Joy Reid says there's no doubt global warming fueling Hurricane Ian, the hurricane that happened in Florida. She says if you vote Demo for Democrats, that they will stop hurricanes, tornadoes. And remember, Obama stated we will stop sea levels from rising if you elect me. So, Obama, why did you buy a multi-million dollar house less than 50 feet from the water? Really, Joy, the last 50 years, these are the facts, folks. I'm just looking at the facts. The last 50 years, hurricanes have been decreasing. And for and how long have we had hurricane season, folks? It's nothing new. And tornado season. We have it every year. The last 10 years, hurricanes are down. Here's a fact, six major storms in Florida in the last 57 years. 50 years before that, there were 16. Can we drop the climate change BS? Please. You know, I thought global warming doesn't exist anymore and it's called climate change. You can't have it both ways. Now, she states, Joy states, there's a lot that has changed about the earth that has made... Um, you know, things worse, right? Uh, things are thriving because the water is getting warmer. And she states, we stop calling it global warming for political reasons, but that's what it is. Our earth is getting warmer and there's just no doubt. And I think, uh, you know, we've been feeding this beast. We need to do something about it. She states, once again, we stop calling it global warming for political reasons. Those are her words. Remember, folks, everything that is, that is expensive hurts the poor the most. We know that if we help the poor, we could have our cake and eat it too. What do I mean? 
if we get out of their way, the government, get out of their way, get out of our way, while they're trying to be rich, the planet would actually be a, a better place. We'd be in better shape. As everyone has pointed out, let's say, this is interesting. Let's say every car is taken off the road, every plane out of the sky, and we don't use a drop of oil or natural gas going forward. So we go back to caveman times in the United States. So you have little windmills on your property. If we're lucky, maybe a couple solar panels. And so we're pre-industrial. We go back, we go back a thousand years. You know the effect it is going to have on global climate. Guess what, folks? Nothing. Nothing. It's a drop in the bucket, people, because the biggest polluters in the world are by far, on record proven 100%, China, India. Brazil, Russia, the Middle East. So as John Kerry said, if the United States went completely green, 1,000% green, we, you know, we're foraging for food in the forest, we're eating bugs, we're not having a ribeye steak, you know, horse and buggy type scenario. There's no cows. You know, kill the cows because of all the methane gas. Screw it, kill the horses too. Bottom line, it will have no impact on the world whatsoever. That is a 100% fact, no impact on the world whatsoever. And so, by the way, with half of Florida underwater, what do you think your chances of having an electric car now are? You think an EV, uh, they work well underwater? What about the damage to your battery? You see all the videos on Twitter, the, 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 car, the, 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 the EVs and Teslas on fire and smoking? Uh, you know what the crews right now are using to work around the clock to help people of Florida are using? They are using gas-powered vehicles. Why? Because Florida has no power. Two million people are without power. So tell me, genius, if our first responders had to use electric cars, what do you think would happen? How could they power their trucks and cars, right? You need gas. Their power's out. Do you know that Hurricane Ian is number five? There were four others that were worse than Hurricane Ian. Can you imagine if all we had was windmills and solar panels and electric batteries for the people of Florida right now? They would all die. They would all die, period. It would be death and destruction right now. If we had an earthquake, in, if we, all we had is wind and solar and we had an earthquake in California, what do you think would happen? It would be death and destruction. Bottom line, the earth heats and cools and it takes care of itself. The next ice age by top scientists said won't happen for another 50,000 years. They said, we're good. Mark Twain, who I quote a lot, he's got a lot of famous quotes. He's a genius. Mark Twain wrote about New England. He wrote about New England weather. If you don't like the weather, just wait four hours. The weather is always changing. Mark Twain, we have been dealing with climate change forever, folks. Temperatures cool and then they turn, and then they warm. Nothing new. So if we give politicians enough of our money, they can control the weather now. They said, hey, you vote for us. We'll, we'll, we can control the weather. We'll have no more hurricanes. We'll have no more tornadoes. They'll control global temperatures. They'll stop earthquakes. They'll stop hurricanes. These are the same politicians. I'm a taxpaying citizen, so I'm calling you out. These are the same politicians that can't balance our budget. They can't fix our potholes, fix homelessness. Make our cities safer. Make our borders safer. I know I have friends, they've gotten hurt, robbed, one person killed. We're talking about climate change and our crime is skyrocketing in every major city. People are dying. And I'm quite frankly sick of it. And a lot of people that I know are sick of it too. And aren't you? This is laughable. You know what green energy means? Green money, baby. Green as the color of money. Follow the money. They're going to kill the fishing industry, right? For what? This uh, globalist utopia that will help the elites buy another jet? Show me the evidence where the sea levels went up in Florida. Show me the evidence. There is no cause and effect. There is no evidence. Period. End of story. So notice this. Is it climate change? You know, it's climate change when it's cold. And when there is a hot spell, then it is global warming. Tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes have been going on, ladies and gentlemen, for thousands of years. 
We survived five ice ages. The world has been going through heating and cooling stages forever. It is nothing new. You know, climate alarmists have pointed to Hurricane Ian as evidence. You know, as evidence, the climate emergency is very much here and demands immediate action. That Hurricane Ian, you know, climate impacts are here today, so we need to double down. We need to double down on climate adaptation now. Here's what I'm concerned about. Never mind that the world faces right now a devastating energy crisis because of ill-advised green policy uh, decisions uh, just as winter arrives. We don't have a replacement for fossil fuels. You can't shut it off. It's been intentional. Never mind that hurricanes have not increased in frequency or intensity in recent decades. It's a fact. As if no one has ever seen a hurricane before the Industrial Revolution. LOL, ladies and gentlemen. Never mind that there, there is an actual war going on in Ukraine. And it's escalated big time. People are talking about World War III and throwing around words like Armageddon. Never mind people are starving and dying all over the world right now because of supply chain issues done by design. Forget all that, Tim. In the end, climate change is the only story that matters right now. I think it's pretty scary, in my opinion. What is going on right now? Maybe we could put climate change, all I'm asking for is maybe put climate change on the back burner until we fix all of our other problems right now. Can we at least do that? That's all I'm asking for. Is that too much to ask? Maybe address some of the real problems caused by climate change hysterics right now? You know, I said it earlier, this is a single-minded strategy for climate change alarmists, and it's done by design, I get it. It's just getting out of hand. We, you, know, you know, the predictions, if we look at precedent made by Gore and other have proven false, there is no doubt they have created enormous streams of wealth for themselves, of course, and those associated based upon the environmental social and governments, which are companies are being forced to go on the ESG index, the climate change, you know, catastrophism's uh, heyday has arrived, ladies and gentlemen, and it's thriving. It's going to be big business for those in the know to line their pockets. Meanwhile, voices questioning the climate change alarmists, they are growing louder. And I think it's good. All I'm saying is to have debate. I'm just reporting the facts. You know, as journalist Lee Smith asserted, climate change alarmists tell us that if we don't trade fossil fuels for green energy, the world will come to an end. The science, they say, is settled. Even if they can't settle on a fixed date for the coming climate apocalypse. You know, the date keeps moving. They keep moving the football. They keep moving the goalpost. We were supposed to be dead right now. The question becomes, why are U.S. and E.U. politicians determined to push Western civilization back into the dark ages? What is the why? And the only thing I can come up with, the only thing I can come up with is because, ladies and gentlemen, it's an extortion racket. There is big money at stake for global elites invested in the climate agenda. And the best way to ensure it reaches their bank accounts is to terrorize the world's population into believing that unless we agree to the oligarchy's demands to shrink our means while they expand theirs. It's not fair. The earth will burn into a fiery crisp if we don't fix this problem right now. We can stop tornadoes. We can stop hurricanes. Perhaps it's time to take a closer look and determine what is fact and fiction. You know, for starters, um, there has been a complete dismissal of the benefits of fossil fuel use uh, this includes the, you know, the pivotal fact that um, the failure to acknowledge that fossil fuels power technologies significantly, you know, mitigate the effects of climate emergencies and deaths from extreme weather events have decreased during the so-called climate emergency. Solar and wind technologies after 50 plus years, ladies, and gentlemen, this is a fact. After 50 plus years of development are nowhere close to being capable of replacing fossil fuels. So you don't shut down your fossil fuels. On top of that, when your enemies say, screw you, we're not going to stop. Observation of physical reality shows that the infrastructure needed for so-called clean energy is right now disastrous for the environment. 
the economic numbers give evidence that you know the transition to the Green New Deal is catastrophic for humans. But you know we want to bring that population down to under you know maybe 1.8 billion. So who cares about humans, right? So in the United States alone, just reporting facts: wind turbines kill more than a million birds a year. The strip mining required to obtain rare earth minerals for solar panels and electric car batteries cuts, you know, paths of devastation through the earth. You know, and the models that are presented that I reviewed are at best and bear no semblance to reality when you look at this stuff. I mean, I want to have a debate on this. Sorry, I don't want certain scientists to have their not be published. I mean... If you look at this case in point, the manipulation of the surface temperature readings by the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change, the IC or the IPCC, it's concerning. You know, the further exaggeration in disseminating synthesized, you know, fines to the public uh, by designated experts and media, it's all covert. You know, the IPCC's hiding of the, its raw data and, tech, and, and their mythology. They're doing that, you know, the blocking of outside investigations, attempting to, you know, replicate the results these people find. They're shutting down scientists, you know. If you're confident in your results, you know, they're block, you know, they're blocking climate change skeptical scientists from publishing their findings in peer-reviewed journals. That's not fair. I mean, come on, why are you doing that? You know, you know, it's just, you know, and when you look at the public, the mounting public disillusionment, the Biden administration's office, and this is interesting, just they hired Yui, uh, Y-U-E Chen it's a, as the emergency first climate cop. So we got a climate cop, the chief risk officer, and that was from September 12th statement. So uh, it's the office of, uh, you know, comptroller of the currency. It's a, it's a Treasury Department bureau overseeing you know, the country's largest banks and federal savings association. So Chen's, you know, a graduate of the Chinese Communist Party, you know, controlled university accepted, uh, you know, they ex accepted this important post in the Biden administration. So that's interesting. These experts have altered IPCC reports after scientists had written and approved the final test to remove skepticism regarding that humans have you know, are, are having a major impact on climate and global warming. They likewise failed to mention that during the period of 1998 through 2013, there has been no significant warming despite a 7% rise in carbon levels on the planet. That is a fact. The rate of global warming has decelerated since 1951 despite a 26% increase in carbon levels. Okay? So, the long-term goal of climate change catastrophe, right? Catastrophism is to, you know, curtail economic growth. And that's from philosopher and energy expert Alex Epstein. He contended in his book, Fossil Future. According to Epstein, the idea is to hamstring humanity to eliminate the human impact on the environment altogether. Just eliminate it. So, in short, climate catastrophism amounts to, uh, you know, eliminating cheap and reliable energy. Bottom line. Meanwhile, climate change alarmists such as Al Gore are enriched at our expense. It turns, you know, turns out the notion of rising seas swallowing up island nations is actually uh, more climate alarmism designed to erode, you know, opposition to massive government takeover of American economy. And that's what this is about. And that's what I'm concerned about. And I will just say this. I'm going to the Capitol Grill tonight with a, a client and I'm going to get a 22 ounce whereby with uh, French onion soup and um, a wedge salad. And I, I would invite Klaus Schwab and his right-hand man uh, to the dinner. Um, you know, I don't want to eat bugs. And I will say this. I, had, I went through a gene, uh, gene testing process. My genes are at the top of the chain. I went through a three-day, it's called a presidential executive 
a medical testing procedure. They tested me for three days, full body scan, everything. And I had a gene, gene sequence and everything. My genes are at the top, no heart disease, no cancer, no nothing. Arteries are unblocked. I mean, I am like the top, top tier. And I had my sperm frozen as well. They said my kids will be genetically superior. Uh, I have a case of Asperger's and dyslexia, but I have a photographic memory. I tested off the charts later in life. So my genes are solid and I want to invite you guys to dinner and I want to sell myself to go to this new utopia. Um, but there's one problem. I believe in humanity and I believe in God. There's only one God. Men cannot become gods, machines, merge with gods. There's only one God and I believe in humanity. So I don't think it's going to work out. Just want to make you guys aware of this. It's very concerning. I'm looking at both sides of this and um, we're in a beautiful place and things are changing for the worse right now and I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't want to have to talk about this stuff and this is a long presentation, but I looked at a lot of data and I've been thinking about this for over a year. I've talked to a lot of people and I have a lot of interesting conversations with some important people and, and other people too. I believe in humanity and I believe in God and you should too.